Awesome, awesome, awesome. Looks like we're back to get ready to work, get back to business. <laughs> anyways, anyways, anyways. Yeah, you know, this is going to be the fourth part of this, uh, you know, practice type problems here. You know, let's go ahead and get this stuff started here. Let me go ahead and bust out my snipping tool. Let's go ahead and cut off some, uh, some of these problems. And we're going to finish off. Hopefully, we could do at least number 17 and maybe either 18 or 19. I'm pulling 17, 18, 19. Because these are problems with decimals. And again, sometimes we see decimals, we start freaking out, everything falls apart. But let's we don't need to freak out. We don't need to freak out because math is the same steps no matter what. The more practice we get with math, the easier it becomes. A little bit of practice makes it all worthwhile. That's for sure. Okay, let's take a look at this problem. We got number 17 here. Okay, and remember, whenever we do any problem having to do with mathematics, the order of operations should be in every single thing you do, all right? So we got the problem, x over 7, x divided by 7. Notice, it's very different than what we saw before. You know, in this problem, there's x divided by 7, and then we're going to subtract 0 0.5, okay? It's, it's, it's a good problem. It's a good problem here. It has decimals. People freak out with decimals. But you know what? It's going to be okay. Hard work pays off. Remember that. Okay. Hard work always pays off. Okay. So we got X divided by 7 minus 0 0.5 equals 2.5. Remember, when working these problems, we always start from the bottom and work our way up the order of operations here. Okay. So let's go ahead and keep this going. Do we got any adds or subtracts? Of course we do. Remember what I said. It was X divided by 7 minus 0 0.5 equals 2.5, you know, or, or 0 and 5, or 5 tenths and 2 and 5 tenths, okay? So sorry, you know, 0 0.5, whatever. Point being is that we see that there is a subtraction, and the opposite of subtraction in this problem will be addition. Notice how I'm lining up the decimals, because whenever we add or subtract, we line up the decimal, and then we're going to be able to do this problem. Okay. Some of you may already be able to see what the answer is going to be on the right. Okay. Two and a half plus another half is going to give us our answer. But of course, you know, we could just line up the decimal and do the math here. Okay. If you, if you do have problems with decimals, though, I would recommend you bust up that four function calculator because as long as you type it in correctly, as long as you know how to use the tool correctly, this stuff's going to be cake. It's going to be easy, okay? Notice, I went ahead and did the work. I got 3 for the answer of 2.5 plus 0 0.5. Let's go ahead and do the left side. Notice the 0 0.5s on the left side canceled out. And we're only left with X divided by 7 on the left side. All right? Hopefully, you're getting in the groove of this. Hopefully, this is making a lot of sense. And the opposite of dividing by 7 is multiplying by 7. And whatever we do to one side, we do to the other side, all right? So I multiply both sides by 7. It's the multiplication property of equality. So I got to multiply both sides by 7. My 7s cancel in this problem, all right? And I'm left with X on the left side, okay? Now we got to do some work on the right side. Of course, I'm going to tell you that 3 times 7, that's multiplication facts. 3 times 7 is... 21. 21. Yeah, 21. Yeah, you got it. And that's what X would be in this problem. It would be 21. And there you go. We have successfully used working backwards to make sure that we, you know, that we're doing the work correctly. Okay. And that's that's pretty much the steps. So, you know, let's keep it going. Let's do another one here. Okay. I want to throw some of these decimals problems because sometimes people freak out about them. But we don't need to freak out as long as we practice, okay? The steps don't change. The numbers may get harder, but the steps don't change, guys. Let's take a look at our next problem here, okay? Let me go ahead and do that. Boom. We're taking a look at this crazy problem. Crazy stuff. Crazy. <laughs> this is all good. We're looking at this crazy problem over here. We got ourselves 2.5 times G plus 0 0.5 equals to 9, sorry, sorry, equals to 0 0.95. If you want to say it correctly, we could say it, we have 2 and 5 tenths 
times G plus 45 hundredths equals to 95 hundredths. Okay, that's how you would say it. But now we don't really need to know how to say it. We need to know how to do it, right? We need to know how to do it. Of course, I'm going to do the order of operations. That's just always in everything we do. Of course, the more and more we practice math, we may not need to write GEMDAS all the time or PEMDAS. We don't need to if you already got it up here. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a guy who likes to be very, you know, I, I have habits, very habitual with my habits. I want to make sure that my habits stick. And, you know, it's it's been good for me, okay? Notice I'm already doing some work. We have 2.5 times G plus 0 0.5. Remember, we're working backwards, so we start from the bottom of the order of operations. So we have an addition. So the opposite of addition is subtraction. And that's why I'm putting negative 0 0.5 on the left. Sorry, 0 0.45 on the left. And I'm also putting negative 0 and 45 hundredths on the right, okay? Because we're going to go ahead and start solving this. And I hope it makes sense. I hope you're feeling it, okay? So our 45s, indeed, they cancel out, okay? They're gone. They're canceling out, okay? Let's go ahead and bring the 2 and 5 tenths G. We're going to bring it down, okay? 2.5 times G, bring it down. Now, the other side, we could do the work by hand. We could do it by hand. That's why I'm teaching you how to do it by hand. Remember, whenever you're adding or subtracting decimals, line up the decimal. That's what we got to do. But we could always use our four-function calculator. We got 0 and 95 hundredths minus 0 and 45 hundredths, and we end up with 0 and 5 tenths. You know, if we did the work, you might want to put 0 0.50 because 5 minus 5 is 0. But it's already kind of showing us. We don't need the 0.50. We could just put 0.5, okay? And that's those are little things that we got to remember from our past in math and that could be used again right now and in the future, okay? So we got ourselves 2.5 times G equals to 0 0.5. We are almost done in this problem. But we still need to divide because we're multiplying on the left. The opposite of multiplication is indeed division. Whatever you do on one side, we do to the other side, okay? My 2.5s on the left cancel each other out. These cancel out, all right? These are gone. So 0 0.5 times 2.5. Look, I'm going to set this up just in case you want to see how you could do it by hand, okay? Remember, our numerator goes inside our division house, okay? We got 0 0.5. The numerator is inside the division house. My denominator, 2.5, is outside the division house, okay? So we're going to go ahead and use this algorithm to do our work. But here's the deal. You cannot, no, 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 no. You cannot have a decimal in this area. If you have a decimal here, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. What we need to do is force the decimal out by moving the decimal. In this case, we're only going to move it one time to the right. Technically, what we're doing here is we're multiplying 2.5 times 10. Okay, that's technically what we're doing. But here's the deal. This is where I'm going to repeat myself from some of the algebra work we've already done. Whatever you do on one side, we got to do the other side. And that even goes for dividing decimals. Notice I had to move the decimal one time to the right. So I'm going to grab this decimal and I'm going to move it one time to the right. Okay. I'm now going to rewrite this as it should be. So what it should look like is five because now it's a whole number five. It's not 0 0.5 anymore. It's a whole number five. And we're dividing five by 25. Okay. Now we could do this problem, okay? Remember, in the, the, the first example, we couldn't do it because a decimal cannot be here. The decimal is not here anymore. So now we could do it. We had to move the decimal one time to the right for both of our numbers. Basically, it means we multiply both numbers by 10. <clears throat> All right, now we can do this problem. We're looking at 25. Does 25 go into the number 5? Remember, we're checking to see how many 25s can we make if we only have five. And I hope you could tell we can't make any 25s. If you only have five of value, you can't make 25, okay? 
So we're going to have to now put the zero at top. We're going to add a decimal zero inside of our division house because we're going to keep adding units of measurement. Sorry, not units of measurement, units of value, placeholders. We're adding units. You know, in this case, we added the tenths place. We got to because we're going to try to find an answer. So we whatever you put in inside our division house, we put on top. OK, now we're going to do this problem. Now we're going to check 50. I know it's not 50. It's 5.0. But we're going to envision ourselves. We're going to pretend it's the number 50. How many times does 50, sorry, 25 go into 50? And I like these numbers. I like them because these are numbers that have to do a lot with money. If you think about this, if you have 25 cents, basically one quarter, how many quarters go into 50 cents? That's the question that's being asked. How many times can this go into that? The 50. Well, in this case, I hope you're thinking about it because, you know, if we have two quarters, you're going to end up with 50 cents. And that's kind of the work behind it. OK, of course, you could always multiply. You could always check your answers. But 25 times two, if you do the math. Two times five is 10. Carry the one. Two times two is four plus one is five. And that's where it comes from. So I'm going to write the 50 underneath. I'm going to subtract. Now, I know there's a decimal here, but we pretend it doesn't exist just for the subtraction. We pretend it's not there, and we finish this problem. 50 minus 50, well, it gives us a good answer, a beautiful answer. It gives us zero. Whenever we get the zero here, we are done. As long as there's no numbers in the division house, we're done. We're good to go. And guess what? My G in this problem, the letter G equals to 0 0.2. And that's how we would do it. And that's how you get the answer. Now, let's say you're having problems with division. You know what? You get to use a calculator. You know, in high school, you're using a calculator. And a basic four-function calculator is good enough. Because really, I'm going to put 0 0.5, just like I had over here. I hope you guys could see it right there. It's right there. We had 0 0.5 divided by 2.5 equals 0 0.2. The same answer I got by hand. OK, but I want to show you these things because sometimes we forget, but I know a little bit of practice goes a long way. OK, so it is what it is here. OK, guys, um, let me go ahead and stop recording here. And hopefully, you know, we got to practice a little bit with decimals and hopefully some of these problems make a little bit of sense. OK, so I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for paying attention if you did. And uh, we'll see you later. I hope you have a good one.